Hello, this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and from Unboxings.com. Here we are looking at the Samsung Galaxy Pro. It's an Android handset, one of the few to have a forward-facing uh, QWERTY keyboard. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing video and take a look at the handset. So the handset is immediately on top. It's quite large, uh, but we'll come back to and look at that in a bit more detail in just a moment. So we'll take a look at what else is in the box. So underneath we have a quick start guide and uh, the warranty information. We then have a small charger, so it's a small three pin wall plug and a micro USB style connector on the other end. Have a USB to micro USB sync and charge cable. And then last of all, there is a two gig SanDisk micro SD card and SD card adapter. Nothing else in the box, doesn't appear to, well there's no wired headset or anything like that. Now this is a PR model so it's possible that uh, there will be a wired headset included in the actual retail model but uh, ours doesn't have one. So let's take a look at the handset. Large QWERTY keyboard is immediately obvious and we have a landscape screen rather than the portrait screen. Uh, the screen itself is actually 2.8 inch. It is capacitive touch screen 320 by 240 pixels. Below that we have the home, back, menu and search button. Uh, four rows of keys that make up the QWERTY. So the actual yeah, letter keys obviously are on three rows. And then underneath we have shift, alt, symbol, um, space and a little, there we go, the little cursor keys there. If we want to get to the uh, number keys they are in the centre here. So that acts as a small dial pad when you're actually in the dialer and in the phone menu. Loudspeaker on top. On the left hand side you have an up and down volume control. Nothing at all other than that. On the bottom, little hole there which is the microphone. A cutout there which is uh, just to get your fingernail in to actually remove the back cover which we can do so in a second. The right hand side has just a power button, nothing else. And on top we have a 3.5mm headphone connector so you can use uh, your own headphones or indeed uh, if it does come with a wired headset you'll be able to plug that in. And then also on the top we have a sliding cover over the micro, uh, micro USB connector for sync and charge. Little hole here is the eyelet for phone charm or lanyard and then it takes us back to the left hand side. On the back we have a 3 megapixel or 3.1 megapixel autofocus camera not very high res is it, let's face it, 3 megapixel and there is no LED flash there is a little hole there which is a grill for the loudspeaker the back is textured, it's plastic but it has a textured finish and a sort of a silvery grey um, paint scheme back cover pops off like so, just peels off we have a space there for our micro SD card battery which is already in place is a 1350 milliamp hour battery and also space for the SIM card. That cover then just snaps on like so. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let's just power up. And while we wait for that to start, let me run down the specification. Quad band for GSM and dual band for HSTPA will work in most countries when you take it abroad or roaming. In terms of size, we're 106 millimeters from top to bottom. Uh, 66.7 millimeters wide, pretty wide because it has to accommodate that landscape screen and uh, a fairly large keyboard which does actually go edge to edge with the keyboard so uh, there isn't much wasted space there and the keys are quite large and in terms of thickness we're 10.7 millimeters thick weight is only 103 grams so it doesn't feel particularly heavy but it does feel kind of wide in your hand I have to say this one's supplied by 3 so it actually has obviously the 3 branding uh, and that's where our review model came from. 800 megahertz processor, so it's not too much of a slouch, although a lot of the Android handsets at the moment are um, having the 1 gigahertz processor. But this one's 800 megahertz, 512 meg of RAM. We're not sure about the ROM, that isn't listed in the specification that we have. Built in FM radio, also we have Wi Fi supporting 802.11 BG and N standards, which is very good. And also Bluetooth 2 with A2DP support. Built-in GPS, ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, all that kind of stuff, uh, which is pretty much the standard. 1350 milliamp hour battery is quoted to have a 610 hour standby life, 
and 11 hours of talk time. That seems pretty good, and if that is uh, anything like accurate, um, then that is an impressive run time from, from that battery. I'm just waiting for this to start up. The first start-up time, always longer on an Android handset, and uh, this is Android 2.2 Froyo. So let's just wait for that to start. There we go, use Google location, we're happy with that. And it's a little bit strange, actually, as a BlackBerry user, to have a touch screen and QWERTY phone, just having to remember now and then that it is touch screen. So the orientation of the display has been shifted, so the buttons down the side are the launcher to actually get into all your applications and uh, it's not responding too well, I think it's just still going through the startup. there we go, it's fine now so that's all your installed applications then you've got your mail, contacts and phone so you've got your phone dialer here and we just use the number keys down the bottom there isn't an on-screen keypad I don't think, no, I don't believe there is you've got your call logs, favourites and contacts and obviously as we haven't synced up with anything nothing coming through as yet so on the main home screen you've got the Google search, three favourites, email, Gmail, Maps, Android Market and uh, a link to three. Then we have the connection settings, so we have, let's go back, sorry, ability to turn off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sync and change the backlight brightness with a toggle. Uh, no active applications, got shortcuts of the camera, gallery, YouTube and Google Talk. There's a blank page, oh there's something here at the top actually, which you can't connect to right now. So we have only three pages there to play with right at the moment. And uh, that's obviously the Android tips at the top. So let's go in and connect to a Wi-Fi network. which I've gone past, there we go, sorry, wireless network's right at the top, turn on the Wi-Fi, and we'll connect to a Wi-Fi network, so there is no on-screen equivalent keyboard, which may seem kind of obvious, but it would perhaps be nice to have an on-screen keyboard as an alternative to the physical QWERTY, but let's go ahead and connect. There we go, we are connected. It took a moment or two to connect. We have the built-in accelerator, so we can take it that way around if we want to, and back. But now we're connected, let's go back home, and let's take a look at, first of all, we'll go into and find the browser, which is there. Now, one thing that is immediately obvious to me is that the 320 by 240 pixel display is quite limited. I would have much rather have seen that as being a maybe a half VGA rather than quarter VGA. But let's go ahead and try this out anyway. So the page is loading using Wi-Fi and broadband connection it's very fast as we would expect and the page is loaded now page looks um, certainly here hasn't been rendered terribly well because of the limited number of pixels on the display we can scroll through double tap to zoom in and the text then becomes readable and then tap to zoom out two finger zooming isn't supported by the looks of it, no it's not So whether or not we have no multi-touch or it's just not supported through the browser we're not sure but in order to zoom we have to use the on-screen control here or double tap which is a bit of a shame again the other thing that's obvious to me that again you're not going to see uh, through the camera lens is that this is actually a 240 by 320 pixel display that has simply been put into this device this way round um, which may not seem like a big deal um, but anybody that's seen one of these uh, landscape key, uh, screens before may understand what I'm talking about but because of my because your eyes are stereo two eyes and you've got a slightly different viewing angle in the landscape orientation than you would 
the portrait orientation, and that the pixel arrangement is uh, sub-pixels RGB, 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 and uh, it's been put this way around so it's RGB downwards rather than across, and as I say the viewing angle is slightly different, it means that the display is not as legible as it could be, it's much more legible in portrait than it is landscape. That is just something I notice. Um, it means that the reflection seems a little bit more um, annoying as well in the landscape mode. But uh, that's the browser anyway. And let's take a look at Google Maps, which has loaded within three and a half, more nearly three and a half kilometers, which isn't great, but we are indoors. And we can turn on traffic and we can turn on satellite layers. And again, with the limited display resolution, it's not doing a terrible job by any means. It's okay. But as I say, because of the, you'll probably notice there as I, wrote, as I tilt the handset, it has a limited viewing angle, which is far less limited here in portrait orientation than it is in landscape. And as you can see, limited viewing angle. I know we've got some glare there and I apologise for that. But uh, you can see there as I just tilt the handset only a little bit, the viewing angle is much more restrictive, which is why I'm commenting about effectively it's a screen that's been put in around the wrong way, rather than being specifically designed as a 320 by a 240 screen. But uh, well let's not go on about that anymore. <laughs> so go into Android Market and we'll sign in and we'll sign into a Gmail account which shouldn't take a moment to do do a quick sign in finish we'll accept terms and conditions obviously otherwise we can't use it also worth pointing out that I'm connected here to a Wi-Fi network I've got only one or if you like of Wi-Fi signal and I am standing approximately 8 to 10 feet from the wireless access point and it's variable it's gone up to 2 now and that down to 1 and I am in completely free air as well there's nothing apart from my body between me and that wireless access point so perhaps not the most receptive handset when it comes to Wi-Fi. I also don't have a phone signal, which isn't particularly unusual where I live. Um, very rural location. I very rarely get a phone signal, but it's again variable here and it's, uh, well on this handset it's picking up nothing right now on 3. But nevertheless, let's have a look. So this Android market is loaded this is loaded in the landscape orientation which I haven't really looked at before but you have your apps and my apps, there's a few that are downloading updates so Gmail and Google Maps are being updated right now and uh, YouTube looks like it may have already updated there's a little progress bar or pro meters at the top indicates at the top indicating that there's something downloading uh, Google Maps has uh, finished downloading and installing Gmail is just still installing there so that's uh, oh, and that's all installed. So you've got your apps, your games, menus, and settings in there. If we drop that down at the top, we have a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, silent, and auto rotation that we can turn on and off. And we can accept emergency calls only right now because we don't have a full signal. We've got Gmail and Google Maps telling me that they've been installed, and one Samsung app update also available. Let's take a look at that. Mode updates. It's asking me to replace something. What's it asking me to replace? Ah, we'll skip that for now. A bit boring. Um, so that's updated. Um, G Gmail. So let's go into there. There we go. And that's because I've signed in already. Android Market and the Gmail account has synchronized back. I could also set up other email accounts 
which will support Exchange, Active Sync, POP3 and IMAP accounts. So that's what else we've got. We've got a gallery with uh, no content. We've got FM radio, which wants me to connect the headset in order to make that work. Got calendar. And then we have YouTube. Let's take a look at YouTube on here. We'll do a search for. I have to say, I really do like the keyboard. That's working really well. It's nice and tactile, but it's also fairly soft. So it doesn't really click click, but you can just feel it. So that's quite nice. And we've got a couple of. See our videos there, Leo D being my YouTube alias, if you like. That's playing okay. Let me switch it that way around. You get it. Partial screen with the stuff underneath. Let's just skip back out of there for now. And what else do we have? We have latitude, we have navigation, my files. There's a calculator, B Jewel pre installed, WinCache, the Sims, and a few other things there that were also pre installed, including a task manager, which is useful so we can see what's running. And various other applications. So that is a fairly quick look at the Samsung Galaxy Pro. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks and in the meantime if you want to follow us on Twitter it's twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt.co.uk. Please do feel free to tweet me or ask me any questions whether it be about this or any other handset we're reviewing at the moment we will do our best to get back to you. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on Tracy and Matt.co.uk but for now thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with Unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.